Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we learned how to take inputs using data binding. But we just took the input and there is no functionality yet. So in this video, we will code the login functionality and that means we will send the email and the password to our backend server to check whether the given email or password is correct or not. Now to do this, we need web services or you can say RESTful APIs. But in this course, we are not going to learn about creating web services or RESTful APIs. And that is why I have already created the RESTful APIs for this course. So first, I will show you the RESTful API that I created. And you can use this API in your project as well because I have deployed it in my server. So this is my API and it is taking email and password. And when I send a post request to this URL, it is returning a JSON response. And that means the login is successful because I entered the correct email and password. But if I enter something wrong, then in this case, I will get this response. That means invalid email or password. So this is the API that I will use in the project that we created. Now, if you want to learn about creating RESTful APIs, then you can click here to go to the course that teaches you about creating RESTful API using PHP and MySQL. So now come back to your Android project and first inside data, create a new package and I will name this package network to store all the classes related to our network operation. And I will create one more package and I will name it repositories. And this package is to store all the repositories. Now inside network package, I will create a Kotlin file class and I will name it my API. And this is going to be an interface. And this is the interface for our retrofit API calls. As you know, in retrofit, we create an interface and we define all our API calls inside the interface. Now, if you want to learn about retrofit in detail, then again, you can click here to check retrofit tutorial. I have a separate retrofit tutorial as well. So you can go through that tutorial as well if you want to learn about retrofit in detail. So inside this interface, first I will define a post call. So I will write at the rate post and we need to call login, which is the endpoint of my API. So I will write here login. Now, whenever you are using post, you need to use form URL encoded in case of retrofit. So this annotation is very important when you are working with post. Now I will define a function and I will name it user login. Now this function will take email, which is string and password, which is also a string. Now we also need to define the API names because we need to send email and password and these string should match with field annotation value. So here we will define field and we will write email and the same we will do for password. So these names should match with your API calls and you can name your variables anything that you want. Now this function user login will return us a call and it should be a retrofit call and the type of this call would be response body. That means this call will give us a response body. So this is our function that will perform the user login and will return us a call. Then we will execute that call to get the response as we are getting here. Now inside this interface, I will create a companion object and inside the companion object, I will create an operator fun invoke. And the benefit of using this invoke is whenever I want to call this invoke, I will just write my API and then parenthesis and it will call this invoke. It is same as calling my API dot invoke. Now this invoke will give us my API. And to create our API, we will use retrofit. So here we will write return retrofit dot builder. And first we will set the base URL 
and this is our base URL till this MVVM so I will copy it and I will paste it here and I will remove the login so we have the base URL then I will add the converter factory and we need to use JSON converter factory dot create then finally we will build the retrofit instance and from the retrofit instance we will get my API instance so we will write create actually we will call the create function from the retrofit to get our API instance so here inside the create function we need to pass our API interface which is this interface my API so here we will pass my API class dot Java and we have the my API returned by this invoke operator so we have done with our API part but remember we cannot directly call this function from our login activity because our architecture pattern says our login activity will only communicate with view model so we are sending the email and the password to the view model then the view model will interact with the repository to send the email and password to our backend web server and then web server will check if the email and the password is valid or not and the web server will return the response so this is how it should be done so inside our repositories package we will create one more file and it is again a kotlin file class and we are going to create a class and I will name it user repository because we need to interact with user repository from this auth view model and our login activity will interact with auth view model and then auth view model will interact with user repository so this is the chain that we always need to follow if we are working with MVVM now inside this class user repository I will create a function and I will name it user login because this function will perform the actual login and to this function again we need to pass the email and the password which is string and string both email and password are string and this function will return us a live data of type string because currently I don't need to or I don't want to parse the response to make the things easy now inside this function I will create a val and I will name it login response and it is mutable live data because we cannot create an instance of live data it is an abstract class so we will create an instance of mutable live data and the type of this live data is string now inside this login response we will store the response that we will get from the API call and to make the API call we need to use this my API interface that we already created so what we will do here we will write my API and then parenthesis we need to import my API and to import you need to press alt enter so we have the my API here now from my API we will call user login function but the problem is we should not do it like this as we are creating an instance of my API inside our user repository class and it is making our user repository class dependent on my API and it is a very bad practice so instead of creating the my API instance here we need to inject it and we will learn about this thing when we will go to dependency injection but just for now I am doing like this but keep in mind that this is a bad practice so we have my API then we called user login and to this function we will pass email and password and then to perform the call we need to call NQ and inside this NQ we need to pass a callback interface and you need to use the retrofit callback because you have so many callbacks here but remember you need to use the retrofit callback and this is the retrofit callback and this callback will give us a response body that's it now we need to implement the members and to implement the members put the cursor here press alt enter and select implement members and we have two members on failure and on response 
So inside on failure, we will get the failure message from this throwable instance and we will put it inside our login response. So let's do it. We will write login response dot value equals to t dot message. That's it. Inside the function on response, first we will check if and we will check whether this response is a success or not. So we will write if response is successful, that means we have a success. So we will get the body of the response and we will add it inside our login response. So we will write here login response dot value equals to response dot body and then string. In case of an error that means when the response is not successful we will get the error body that's it so we have the api call here and finally we will return the login response because this function is returning a live data now we will call this function from our auth view model because you know what our architecture pattern says our activity will communicate with view model and view model will communicate with repository so this is our repository which is communicating with our backend api so we will call this function from our view model so this is the chain that we need to follow always so keep this thing in mind so come back to auth view model and here I will create another login response and I will get the login response from user repository parenthesis and then user login and here we will pass email and password and as we already checked that the email and password are not null we can put this operator to make sure it is not null now this user login is returning us the login response and it is actually a live data that we can observe in our login activity and to do this we will use our authentication listener so we will write auth listener and then on success and we will pass the login response but the problem is this function on success that we have inside our auth listener do not contains any parameters so you just need to add a parameter there and to do this very quickly just press alt enter and select add parameter to function on success and then select refactor and it will add the live data parameter to your function and it will also add the live data parameter here where we are overriding the on success function so we are good to go so what is happening we are calling our user login function that is inside our repository class from our view model class now we have another issue here that we are creating a user repository instance inside our auth view model and again this is a bad practice we should not create instances of other classes inside a class because this makes auth view model dependent on user repository and it is resulting in tight coupling so it is a bad practice but just for now we are doing like this because later we will learn about dependency injection and other stuffs and then we will remove this problem so for now this is okay so we are getting the on success inside our login activity and here we can observe the login response and to do this we just need to write login response which is this parameter dot observe and the first parameter is the owner which is our activity so we can pass this because we are inside an activity now and for the next parameter we will pass observer now observer will return the value in this it keyword so we can simply toast it because for now we will just display the response in the activity with the help of a toast and in coming videos we will perform the actual login operation that means when the user logs in he will go to the home activity so we will do this in the coming videos so for now it is okay and one more thing that we can do is we can display a progress bar and to display a progress bar we can use the progress bar that we already created in our design 
you can see we have a progress bar here so we can use this thing so come back to your login activity and here we can write progress bar which is the id of our progress bar dot visibility equals to view dot visible so when the login task is started or the login function is called we are displaying the progress bar now to make it shorter we can also create an extension function to display and hide progress bar so i will do it inside my view utils file that we created in the last video so come inside view utils and here create fun progress bar dot show so this is an extension of progress bar and here we will set the visibility to visible and we do not need to import this so now the progress bar is visible and the same way we will create one more function to hide the progress bar and this time we will set the view to gone so we have the functions to show and hide progress bar and now we can use these functions so come inside login activity and here instead of this we will just write progress bar dot show and we need to import the function that's it and the same way we will write here progress bar dot height and we should write this in case of a failure as well so we are displaying the progress bar when the task is started and when the task is finished we are hiding the progress bar now let's try running the application but before running it make sure you add internet permission into your android manifest.xml so here i will define an internet permission that's it and let's get rid of this warning so press alt enter and select tools ignore and it will ignore this thing now we can run our application so let's run it so this is our application now let's try signing in so i will enter my email and my password and let's try sign in and we are getting the response so it is working fine but we are not able to see the progress bar and the problem is we are hiding the progress bar here so it is displaying the progress bar and it is hiding the progress bar so the process is very quick that is why we are not able to see the progress bar so to see the progress bar we need to hide the progress bar when the api call is completed and to do this we will hide the progress bar inside this observer and now it should work so let's try signing in and you can see we have the progress bar and we have the response if you will enter some wrong password then you will get a different response so it is working absolutely fine so that's all for this video friends in case you want my source code then you can get it from the link that is given in the description of this video and i hope you found this video helpful and if you actually did then please like this video and share this video with your friends so thanks for watching everyone this is bilal khan now signing off